When flying in real life or even on the simulator, there's going to be probably two types of approaches that you're going to fly. You're going to fly the RNAV GPS or the RNP, or you're going to fly the ILS. Now, they're kind of different. If you guys didn't know, there are two separate types of approaches, even RNP and GPS, but we're not even going to talk about RNP today because I want to talk more general aviation. But if you guys fly airliners on the simulator, let me know and I'll make another video about RNP approaches. But today we're going to talk about whether to fly the RNAV or or to fly the ILS. So we're gonna do a cross country, or it's not really a cross country because it's not 50 nautical miles, from Albert Witted to Sarasota today in the simulator. And here's basically what we're gonna do. So we're gonna fly the ILS for runway 14. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Let me, let me check the weather, let me check the weather. All right, so the wind is 1508. So we're probably, yeah, we're gonna take runway 14 and we're gonna have an eight knot tailwind. Or eight, no, 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 wrong. We're gonna have an eight knot headwind and then a little crab. We're gonna have to crab a little bit because the wind's coming from the right. I'm gonna show you guys both approaches. So the ILS is one of the approaches we're gonna fly. We're not gonna worry about the localizer because it's not a video about localizers it's about the ILS or the RNAV GPS so you can see on the ILS um, it's different from the RNAV GPS we're gonna take the RNAV GPS first just because it'll be a little bit easier to fly at first but this this is gonna be the ILS so you can have the Pi VOR as your initial approach fix you have your localizer frequency of 11.3 and your approach course of 140 we have a long runway so we're not worried about runway lengths and um, the missed approach procedure, we're going to climb to 1,000 and climbing left turn to 2,000 on the Sarasota VOR DME radial 118 to Murdo, 13.6 DME and hold. Our minimums for this approach today are going to be 223 feet MSL. It's going to be our decision altitude because this is a precision approach. But RNAV GPSs are not precision approaches and they have the same minimums. So we're gonna fly both today and see which one is gonna be better. Now, disclaimer, in the airlines, you're not gonna fly LPV. I'm 99% sure you're not gonna fly LPV when you're flying an airliner. It's usually gonna be LNAV VNAV, which is a higher decision altitude. So that's why airliners will prefer an ILS and also other reasons too. But let's go ahead and get into the simulator because we are actually in a convective SIGMIT as well. So let's go hop into the simulator and go fly these approaches. Alrighty, welcome everybody. We're, we're on the ground here over at Albert Witted. We're gonna get the plane started up as well, but I already told you guys what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna go set up our first approach. We're gonna fly the RNAV runway 14. Then we're gonna fly mist approach, or we're gonna get alternate mist to set up for the ILS for runway 14 as well. We want this to be on GPS mode because we're going to fly the GPS first. So we're going to go into nav. So we're going to do direct Sarasota. Activate boom. I'm going to switch to nav page so we can get a map. There's no GPS position right now. But we'll start taxing to the runway at witted. Um, runway 7 in use, which I know where runway 7 is. All right, lined up on the runway. So we're going to go down here. We're going to do proc select approach. And we're going to take the RNAV 1-4. And our initial approach fix is going to be um, Passoe. So it'll be right here. Activate boom. So when we take off, it's going to take us direct to that waypoint. And we're just going to follow the CDI needle and the GPS and also basic instrument flying skills. We do have um, a cloud layer right here at 220 feet because I want to show you guys flying the approach down to minimums. The difference between the RNAV GPS and the ILS is the RNAV is going to use the GPS. So basically satellites are up in the air, whereas the ILS is going to use a um, ground based localizer with a glide slope. So usually ILSs are going to be determined as a precision approach whereas RNAV approaches are going to be non-precision even though they should be precision but that's a whole another thing so let's add some full power and we can start that turn as well now we're going to be going straight into IMC as well so we're going to have to be very careful so for this approach we're going to fly we're going to go to 2,000 feet at Pessoe then Frugal is going to be 2,000 until we intercept the glide path uh, that's not a standard rate turn so we intercept the glide path for runway 14 and then our missed approach point is going to be runway 14 as well. Want to keep that turn coming, want to keep that turn coming. Instrument flying on the sim is very hard when you have a joystick. Oh wait, we have autopilot. So we're actually just going to do direct. We'll do it like that. And then we're going to climb the 2000 feet. Uh, we can bring our vertical speed up a little bit higher. 
so coming from this direction as well we're not gonna have to fly the course reversal it'll just be a direct entry but if you were flying from the south you'd probably need to do like a parallel or a teardrop so we do also have an approach mode on here as well on the autopilot which i did not know even though i've used this autopilot in real life but that's only for private training i haven't used it for instrument message approaching vnav profile okay now if you guys fly g1000 it's going to be a little bit different for the um flight character or not flight characteristics but like the avionics wise but it's primarily the same concept as well so like right now we're in terminal mode on the gps we won't switch until lpv until past the final approach fix which we're coming upon the initial approach fix of pesoe 99 percent sure we're gonna have to fly the course reversal i really hope we don't because that would suck we'll activate the we activated approach so it looks like we're gonna fly a teardrop uh we're gonna set the approach course of 139 we'll just roll that in here okay autopilot does not want to work but there we go so we're going to do a parallel entry since we came from the south again so we're going to pass the initial approach fix of pesoe and then we're going to fly the course of one or 319 yeah you can see down here direct 319 so we're going to fly outbound or I think it's one minute legs on here, but they could, nope, never mind. They're four nautical mile legs. So unpublished holds will probably be, or most likely be one minute holds, whereas GPS holds are gonna be four nautical mile holds. Unless ATC specifies, then ATC will specify. All right, we're starting to approach our initial approach fix again after the little course reversal. Also, this video is not to instruct you guys how to fly approaches. This, should, this video is just, because I want to show you guys the difference between an RNAV and an ILS and which one for you to fly. Alrighty, so we're passing our initial approach fix. There we go. Now we go into LPV mode. So we're going to start slowing it down and our course sensitivity is going to start going up as well. We want to slow it to about 90 knots airspeed. Bring it to about like 21 or something like that and just let it gradually slow down because we have time until our final approach fix. We'll also arm approach mode as well. So hopefully this will fly it without manual input. See, we're at 90 knots, perfect. Give us some power so that we don't slow too slow. All right, we're getting near our final approach fix. Oh, nope, no power change. So what you're gonna start seeing is the little glide path needle coming in. It's gonna be the same for the ILS as well. Also for the ILS, we can start putting in the ILS frequency. So we're gonna do 111.3, just ID it. Yep, ID ILS 14. So we got that set up, we can even listen in. And you can see this blind path needle starting to come in. We'll also start slowing her down as well. So we're gonna start descending on the glide path. We're gonna add one notch of flaps, bring in about 18. So let's remember that our minimums are gonna be 223. Decision height is gonna be 200 feet. So that's gonna be AGL. And we're at 1300. We've got a good descent going right here. Perfect power setting. Make sure our landing light's on. We'll turn on taxi lights as well. So we're on a two mile final for the runway, just so you guys know. And we're still in the clouds. So I had a Tiggy, which is our next waypoint. We were probably gonna be at 560 feet, just about. We have ground contact, but we do not have runway contact. We'll add flaps two in. So this runway has mouser lighting as well. So we should be able to get it in sight, which we do at 300 feet. All right, 200 minimums and we'd bring it in to land. power laps up maintain right rudder all right we're gonna go fly the alternate mist so we're gonna do altitude heading and we're gonna do nine a thousand feet per minute climb then we're gonna go reset up for the ILS runway one four and we're gonna use frugal as our initial approach fix. So we'll keep it on GPS mode for now. Uh, we'll set it to nav mode and we should be doing a parallel entry, I'm pretty sure. 
or maybe a teardrop. So for this approach, instead of four nautical mile legs, it's gonna be one minute legs instead. So we wanna be at 2000 feet um, for frugal, fly to holding pattern. And then for a tiggy as well, we're gonna go down to 500 feet. Same minimum, same approach course, but this time we have a localizer frequency in here. And you can also see down here, it says ILS 14, 111.3. So we're just gonna fly outbound and I'll cut back when we're passing the initial approach fix because this is gonna take a long time. Alrighty, so we're just passing, or we're, we're just kind of completing the um, course reversal. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna switch this to VLO and we're gonna set this to approach mode. We're gonna arm the approach. So once we pass frugal, we're gonna intercept the glide slope, which it looks like it's coming in right now. And then we'll start flying the approach. So let's start slowing it down to 90 knots again. 85 is fine as well. We'll also set flaps one. And now we have intercepted our glide slope and our localizer. So we should start our descent. Vertical speed is coming up and our altitude is starting to come down as well. Vertical speed down, I meant, and altitude's coming down. So we're just gonna track the localizer needle and the glide slope needle. So basically the same as an RNAV. Now we're going a little too fast. Passing 3000, we're about a two mile final again. There we go, two mile final, runway one four. We'll add flaps too. Do we have ground contact? We do have slight ground contact. We can go up a little bit, see if we can see the mouse for lighting. All right, we're at 600, 500 AGL. Should see the lights here in any second. About 100 above. Lightning in sight. Minimums. Autopilot's coming off. and landing. I know it's not the greatest landing in the world, but yeah, basically an ILS and an RNAV will get you down. Now let's talk about why. Let's talk about why the minimums are just about the same and the, kind of the science behind both approaches. So since I am too lazy to switch microphones again, you guys are getting this one, but let's talk about the differences again about the ILS and the RNAV and also why we can go down to the same altitude, even though it's considered a non-precision approach. Essentially, LPV minimums stand for localizer performance with vertical guidance. So what happens is in an ILS approach, the closer you get to the runway, the more sensitive the needle is gonna get. With an LNAV approach, it's gonna be the same sensitivity LNAV, VNAV, same sensitivity as well, but LPV is going to change the sensitivity, kind of like a localizer. That's why they call it localizer performance with vertical guidance. Now, for LPV, they're going to have to require what's called WAS, Wide Area Augmentation System. And basically what that does, it sends correction signals to satellites, which then helps your GPS position be more accurate. I know that's a lot to take down. But essentially, RNAV LPV, they can't really be used by airliners too much. I mean, I don't think Airbus A320s or 737s have LPV capability, but I know a lot of um, general aviation aircraft use LPV minimums. So answering the question that you guys um, joined the video for, should you fly an RNAV or should you fly an ILS? It depends. So for instrument, instrument alternate minimums, your airport needs to have 800 feet ceilings with um, two statue mile visibility, I'm pretty sure. I'm still an instrument student, so if I get it wrong, just correct me in the comments. For a non-precision approach, but for a precision approach, it drops down to 600 ceiling and 200, or not 200, um, 600 ceiling and a visibility of two miles as well. I think, I'm pretty sure that's if you need an alternate. But essentially, it really depends on what kind of plane you're flying and what you're more comfortable with. For me, I like flying the RNAV GPS because it's more common and I can get good at practicing it, but the ILS is also a good fail safe in case if you had a GPS outage, for example. Which, fun fact, they actually do happen occasionally. Or a WAS outage. But that's basically about it. Hopefully you guys learned something in this video. If you guys haven't already, make sure you guys go drop a like. If, if we hit 25 likes on this video, I will do my private pilot maneuver video for like getting ready for your check ride. And also I'm basically flying the same route as I did on my check ride when I got my private. So drop a sub, drop a like, and we'll see you guys in the next video.